Thanks to the supporters of channel member Mumongu Gaming. Boys and girls, I know we've been down this road before, but this time I've had an adult come and verify what I'm about to say. Nerd Phonic spent hours with me on Friday afternoon, fiddling with my PC, reinstalling, uninstalling, fiddling with things. I don't fully know what he's done, but he assures me the aliens are gone. We tested it extensively. They seem gone. If they appear in this video, ignore what I'm about to say. But as of right now, we are off the Mac. We're back on the super duper fancy NASA supercomputer gaming PC. And hopefully you'll never need to hear me moan about the aliens again. If you're having that issue in your say, which I know was only a small percentage of you, but if you have been having that issue, um, I'll link in the description below to the tweet that Matt put out explaining what he did to fix it. It's something to do with drivers. It's all a little bit beyond me. But I think the aliens are gone, which hopefully doesn't take away our superpowers and we can continue being great at Football Manager because it might have been the aliens who were causing all these back-to-back -back promotions. We haven't verified that yet. Hello and welcome to Club 2, part 23 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we face Manchester United in the Premier League, which Burton have got something of a track record against Manchester United. Look it up. We should probably go there and win. We're also at home against Brentford. And since you were last with me, we have had a jolly nice start to the season. Obviously, first game of the season, a little bit rough against Sunderland, as you saw yesterday. But we did beat Brighton. We then managed to draw against Liverpool and beat Bristol City, who, of course, came up with us last year. We're also through to the fourth round of the Moose Cup. Not that anyone really cares, but we did beat Aston Villa, which was quite pleasant. And the Premier League table looks like this. Four games in... Stop the count, everybody. We're in a Champions League qualification spot. I would like to apply the most generous pinch of salt. I am a man with high blood pressure. I can't have the amount of salt that I suggest you add to this upcoming statement um, because the reason we're there is because we've played two of the teams who got promoted with us last year. So there are two teams in this league who we know are not as good as we are because we finished above them last year. Sunderland and Bristol City. We did lose to one of them, but we did beat Bristol City. But we have, in our first four games, played two of the teams who came up with us. So take it with a pinch of salt that we're up in fourth place. I don't think we can assume we're just going to finish top of the league again like we usually do. This is the Premier League. That being said, Miles Lieburn, joint top scorer, four goals from Lieburn, who seems to have taken to the Premier League like a duck to water. He actually looks better in this league than he did in the league below. I mean, maybe there's maybe there's more opportunity for a big meaty boy in the Premier League than there is in the land of the big meaty boys down in the Championship. Or maybe at 24 years old, he's just got a little bit better. Uh, but he's now considered to be, I mean, still just a good Sky Bet Championship player. Um, but four goals from four starts, one assist, a 7.65 average rating. If he can keep that up, that'd be jolly nice. Please and thank you. And all of that, of course, brings us to Manchester United. In fact, before it brings us to Manchester United, um, we did have deadline day. Um, not, in, not, in, not an enormous amount of stuff happened on deadline day. We didn't really have any money left, as you knew from the transfer special. So we didn't really do much. Blaine Chambers Shaw has gone out on loan to Plymouth, hopefully to get some decent amount of game time because I still have very high hopes for him. He's still, after two years of not really breaking into the team at 20 years old, showing as having very high potential. So hopefully he can go out and get a full season under his belt in the Championship with Plymouth and come back uh, a player ready to play for us, or at the very least, a player ready for us to sell on for big money and put towards next season's transfer spensies. Um, the only player we brought in is this guy, Lucas Roman, who is an attacking midfielder slash striker, just another extra attacking player, really. He's a little five foot three chap, and looking at his face, I would suggest he's actually 14 and not 24. Uh, but his jumping reach is two because he's five foot three. He's definitely a different kind of attacker to the ones that we've got at the moment. We've got a lot of big, strong, physical boys. He's more of a uh, a, a little a little fan a little fancy lad a little fancy boy who is quick and might just be able to 
pick a lock with a little bit of creativity that we might need later on in the season. I mean, I don't expect him to necessarily come into the team as a starter. He's here on loan and joins us permanently in the uh, in the summer for very little money. I think the fee we've agreed, yeah, £675,000. He's not, I'm not expecting him to be a regular Premier League starter. That being said, he can compete with O'Donoghue, who, by the way, did we know O'Donoghue was now a legitimate wonder kid? I think that makes him our first wonder kid of the save. I mean, he was on the next-gen list. It was only a matter of time, but Damien O'Donoghue is now a legitimate wonder kid. Makes it all the more bonkers that Manchester United played him four times and then released him. And we were just able to swoop in and pick him up. He, of course, gets to play against his old club today. Um, but he's also... Uh, what? He's also a mercenary, which seems a little bit harsh. They released him and he's joined us. He's never voluntarily left a club. How do... <laughs> How does that make him a mercenary? They didn't renew his youth contract. That seems very harsh. Um, but you can see that Roman would be a decent backup to him. He's a decent backup in there. He's a decent backup up from... He's just a decent backup, useful player who offers something a little bit different to what we've already got. And we might need that at various points of the season, but we're not going to need it today. I don't think... I mean, he's on the bench. We might need it. Um, but this is the team that has been st started the season so well that we are going to be taking out there for the game against Manchester United. It's Bender in goal. A back four of Sousa, Kitching, Jackson and Lemkin. Why has past Kev got Lemkin in at right back? Because Popov is injured. Uh, Popov is out for the next five days with a gashed upper leg. So Lemkin having to play right back. We don't actually have another out and out right back at the club. Um, so Stav Lemkin is going to play there. That is not ideal. Um, that's the one big obvious area of the squad that we should probably look to improve in January if any money comes in, which usually does. First season in the Premier League, once the money starts to flow through, usually you get a boost to your transfer budget in like mid-December, ready for the January window. So January will be definitely looking at another right back. I'll probably be looking to upgrade the goalkeeper then because I still don't know that Stephen Bender is a Premier League quality keeper. Um, although he's not been disastrous to start the season, so maybe he'll prove me wrong. But Lemkin at right back, Alonso and Luzer in midfield, and then Vidovic, Devine and O'Donoghue supporting Leeburn up front. I'm still very much of the thought process that if we're going to survive this season, it's going to be because of the front four. I think our four in attack, and also, to be fair, the midfield have looked good. I think that the midfield and the attack are levels above where our defence is currently, despite the fact we spent the bulk of our budget on the defence bringing Jackson in. And we kind of knew this was going to be the, the case when the entire defence was on loan last year. It was always going to be a little bit touch and go how good they ended up being this season. And I, I'll i keep saying it, I do think the defence is a little bit of a downgrade from where we were last year. We weren't able to get any of those boys back on loan who were here last year, and we've not been able to find anyone else of an equivalent level. So... It's a little bit of a shame, but hopefully it won't end up costing us because our attack is so good. We'll see how they get on against Manchester United at Old Trafford. I mean, it would be lovely for O'Donoghue to come here and score and just stick one to Manchester United. Now, the other thing you might notice about the gameplay off the back of Matt's fiddling that he did on Friday, um, he's actually got the game running much smoother than it was before as well. Whatever was causing the aliens issue um, was apparently also causing frame rate issues, which some of you may have seen. My old man eyes don't see these things, but apparently there was frame frame rate issues and I can see now the game is running a lot smoother than it was now back on the highest graphic settings as well running beautifully and smoothly so not only should we now be alien free but we should also be looking the best FM24 has looked on this channel so good work Matt everyone should get a Matt round of applause for Matt everyone go to Twitter at Nerdphonic and say thank you Matt because he is a hero uh, Lee Burn who's had a couple of chances early on in this game um, gives it to Lemkin who finds O'Donoghue there's Divine and it's bobbling around in the penalty area Nana's already had to make a couple of important saves for United here but we have had the better of the early chances our XG He's already over one with less than half the first half gone away at Old Trafford. I mean, it does feel a little bit like if we were going to get anything out of today, we probably needed to take our chances. All that talk of our attack being great. We've generated a lot of chances and not capitalised them. I mean, it has been a decent goalkeeping performance so far, but I suspect that is going to end up costing us. Although Rodrigo's done very well there defending the back four. Did I just see Martinez beat... Lee burn in the air because I think I'm done with FM if that's what's just happened there. Martinez is what five foot eight, five foot nine. Lee burn six foot five. 
it just doesn't happen. I don't care. It's it's a nonsense that that's happened. And now, as a result of it, I mean, not necessarily directly as a result, but as part of the same highlight, Manchester United have broken the deadlock. Uh, the referee is reviewing it, so hopefully he's going to disallow it on the basis of there's no way that header could have been legal. But no, apparently it is going to count. It's the same Martinez, right? Lissandro Martinez. I can't see. I assume it is. He's playing left centre-back for Manchester United. It'd be weird for them to have signed enough. There's O'Donoghue, though. And another phenomenal save from Onana. You know what? He's made three world-class saves in the first half hour of this game. We have had some chances, and it it is starting to feel a little bit like it's not going to be our day. I mean, we're Burton Albion. If we come to Manchester United and get FM'd, I guess that's still something to celebrate, even if the result doesn't go our way. But my word, there have been some saves made by Onana in this match. And that's the kind of Premier League difference that I'm talking about when I'm saying I'm not sure Bender is Premier League quality because he's faced one shot and conceded it. Onana, I mean, you know, it should be 3-0 down, at least 2-0 down. Two of the chances have been very, very good ones. The third was a header from a corner from Lieburn that did kind of go straight at him. But the chance that led up to that, and then that one from O'Donoghue there, they are two, I mean, they were they were cut, cut and dry, out and out goal chances. Which is, I mean, that is football terminology right there. And uh, Anana just kept him out. We've got attacking, which might... I mean, it's very brave. We have played very well in the first half, but obviously you don't get points for just playing well. We need to play well and also, you know, score goals and all that talk of our attack. We haven't actually got any goals today. And I would love for O'Donoghue to get a goal against United just to show them what they gave up. Oh, Jackson, the other former Manchester United player in the team has shown them what they're giving up there. I mean, even if O'Donoghue does score now and can hammer home the fact we got that for free, United can point out that we paid £13 million for Jackson and he's just done this. I mean, what's he thinking there? That's not ideal at all, is it? There's going to be a lot of days like this this season. I did say before, to take our league position with a pinch of salt, we hadn't played a team like Manchester United away from home yet. Um, we're going to take off O'Donoghue here because he's on a yellow card. He's tiring and we want to have a look at the new boy. So Roman comes on. Uh, we're going to make him an inside forward over there and just see, like I say, offering a different dimension. Vinovic has been poor as well. Vinovic is actually, and I'm going to whisper it because he was incredible last season. Vinovic hasn't looked great yet this season. He hasn't made the step up in the same way as Devine and Lieburn and O'Donoghue have. And I am a little bit worried for Vidovic. Hopefully it's just a slow start to the season, but it's it's not been very encouraging so far. Um, we are, I mean, we're just making substitutions for the sake of it at this point. We've got some tired legs, but we've, we've lost. We're not getting back into this game. Like I said earlier on, we needed to take our chances in the first half. We didn't. And we're going to end up ruining it. I mean, in the end, their XG has almost got level with ours. We haven't really added significantly to our XG in that second half. And uh, it's been very comfortable for United after the half-time whistle. But my word, did we have chances there. Hopefully, we can take some chances against Brentford. So two changes for the Brentford game, both of them to do with injuries. Popov has recovered from his, so he can come in at right back. Um, but Liam Kitching has now picked up a knock and he's going to be out for a week or so. So Kabongo is going to come in to play alongside Jackson at centre-back. But before we jump into the game, one thing I forgot to tell you, um, I've had an enormous new contract. Look at all that money I'm on now. I've just signed a new four-year deal. I'm £35,500 a week. House hunting coming soon, boys and girls. Just uh, just getting used to my new fancy lifestyle. How much is that a year? Um, bear with me a moment. We're just pulling out the phone. I imagine things like phones are entirely disposable now. No need to get no need to own a charger. Now I'm on thirty-five thousand pounds a week. I just unwrap a new phone every morning. One point eight million pounds a year. I would like a bit of that. That would that would be very pleasant. Imagine imagine that. Goodness, what kind of house can you buy in Burton on Trent for what six or seven million pounds? <laughs> um, it's we'll do house hunting tomorrow. It, we we did a lot of talk about aliens today. Tomorrow can be house hunting, but my word, that is a lot of money. Rodrigo's picked them a knock there immediately. 
And that is not ideal because he is a key, key player for us. We have got Simons on the bench who could come on for him. I mean, that's what they're being recommended to do. But I think Rodrigo is so far ahead of uh, ahead of Simons that we keep Simons on for as long as we possibly get uh, Rodrigo, sorry, on for as long as possible. Jackson now playing it for Davidovich. Jackson would have been in danger of losing his spot today off the back of what happened against Manchester United. But the injury to Kitching has kind of left me with no choice but to keep him in the team. So he does get a chance to redeem himself after that goal he gave away against Manchester United. What we'd really like to see, of course is a goal of our own, say, Ivan Tony still at Brentford all these years into the future is a little bit of a surprise. He must be getting on a bit now because we are, well, I mean, what year is it? We must be six or seven years in the future now. So Tony's going to be well into his 30s. I'm surprised he never left Brentford unless he left and came back. I guess there's no way we can ever know because, of course, we all know if we now click on his name, he is guaranteed to score against us. That's on the assumption that the game isn't listening because there's always the chance that the game is listening and just the fact that we've spoken about him means that he will now score against I mean, I do have his boot in the background. So, you know, I am something of an Ivan Tony guy. Um, if, he, if he becomes a final... I mean, we don't need him! We do not need him. We've got Lee Byrne. Lee Byrne's like eight years younger and even bigger and is outscoring him so far this season. So we absolutely don't need Tony. What I would like is for us to score a goal. I am a little bit alarmed that the aliens were the source of all of our powers and it's all going to go wrong now we don't have the aliens anymore. Can we bring them back? Would that be weird? I don't even know how to reverse what Matt did. Right, Popov is tired. Alonso is also injured. I think we need to probably take both of those guys off. Being forced into some injury changes there. So Lemkin can come on at right back again. Simons can come on in midfield alongside Loser. And uh, we'll just offer a little bit of encouragement because we've not been great. We, we've gone to Manchester United, created loads of chances and out XG'd them. And now we've got, Brentford coming to our place and they're out XGing us, which is, it's not ideal. Roman's going to come on for O'Donoghue as well. He's been had a very quiet couple of matches there since since ascending to wonder kid status maybe he feels like his work here is done lemkin runs himself into trouble very much looked like a right back a center back playing at right back there but there is so i guess i guess our new boy is called pocho on his shirts i like it and he's just got as an assist as well what did I tell you? It offers something a little bit different. O'Donoghue doesn't do that. O'Donoghue is a very direct, more of a goal threat than a creator. But look at this. He's just, he's a little wizard. He's picked the ball up, spun around two men, gone past another, and then found Lee Burn with the cross. That is an immediate impact from the new boy. I think he's going to prove to be worth every penny of that £675,000 that he's going to end up costing us. Lovely, lovely stuff. Roberts is going to come on. Joe Powell's going to come on as well just to try and see the game out. And hopefully we can hold on. Because if we can hold on here, we're going to end an episode in which we played Manchester United away from home, still in the Champions League qualification spots, which would be absolutely delicious if we can find a way to pull that off. Vidovic now, um, who again been very quiet, hasn't he? We're gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna get on him yet, but it is a worry. Uh, Sousa at left back finds Roberts. Roberts tries to burst past his man. Actually ends up coming away with the ball. And Roberts with the cross from the left looking for Lee Byrne, who of course towers over all of these defenders. Um, but unfortunately, he's not able to get a proper connection on it. And now Brentford have got a counter-attack of their own up and running. They've gone past Lemkin with ease. And now we've got our backup midfield trying to protect this back four. And we've got away with one a little bit there because it's a shot that's very, very wild. Doesn't actually test Bender. And hopefully that was that was Brentford's opportunity and they're not going to get another one. It's interesting that we've gone to Manchester United, out XG'd them and lost. And as long as this doesn't go, for goodness sake. For goodness. I was just about to... I was doing a speech. I was doing... I mean, where's Lee Byrne? Why is he not marking him? They're goalkeepers forward there as well. Why is Lee Byrne not on him? Lee Byrne is on him. Why is he getting a... Oh, oh, we got a six foot five guy who can't jump. I mean, he's still scoring goals at the other end. He's just losing out with headers. That, I mean, there's, there's that's been two frustrating matches there. I mean, we're eighth, we will take. We will very much take that as a finishing position. But early signs that we, I mean, we, we always knew it was going to be a tougher season. 
it's going to be a tougher season. Looking forward to house hunting tomorrow, though. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.